Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome to another episode of Derail Valley. We're back down in the harbour. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of work, done some little bit of grinding here, and we've now got, well, we've now got some money, look. 261,000. Did a couple of shunting jobs and stuff uh, down at the last place we was at. Paid off all the bills. Uh, we've now got some money to play with. Today we're going to we're gonna basically jump in the DE6. We are going to go there, yes, the, the big DE6, the mighty DE6, the powerhouse that it is. Uh, let me just check this. We have no fees, and uh, our stats currently, copay is still 10,600. So, I, you know, I used about four different shunters and just racked up a big bill on them because took advantage of this copay. That's what I did, and that's basically build up the coffers. What I want to do today is obviously get the DE6, which is a $200,000 um, payments. However, you do have to be aware with the DE6. You probably already know this, uh, but it does say prerequisites uh, concurrent to there, you see, prerequisites. This will put our copay up massively. Basically, we're now, once you go DE6, you're in the realms of maintenance is going to cost you money. So you need to be thinking about getting this, the manual service. Uh, you need to get copay, uh, sorry, concurrent two, which costs twenty thousand. So you you twenty thousand in on that, two hundred thousand in on that. So you're two hundred and twenty just to get the DE six. Twenty thousand on the manual service. You really need to think about. And to be quite honest with you, you should be thinking about this as well, the train length two. And I'll show you why. So I've gone through all the jobs here. Uh, everything down here is basically hazmat. If you look at it, it's. A lot of stuff that comes out of um, the harbour in particular is hazmat. You tend to see a lot of these things like sodium hydroxide, ammonia, gasoline, cryo-oxygen. They all have different hazmat requirements. Hazmat is not something we're going to focus on, not in this video anyway. I'm going to get us into the DE6, and to do that, we're going to need Concurrent 2. Now, Concurrent 2 does have a massive advantage. I don't know if you know this or not, but Concurrent 1 lets you do an extra job. Concurrent 2 lets you do any number of jobs. So once you've got this, you can basically build any length train you want. You can just go to town. With a D6, it's a beast. So we're going to haul today. Now, I've been through the jobs. Um, food factory in town has got some stuff going on there, but they're all pretty lightweight. Not particularly great. City Southwest, complete rubbish. Uh, up here, Oil World Central is... This one doesn't require... And this is the weird thing about the game, because this is a logistic hall, the cars are empty, it doesn't have a hazmat license, because you're not carrying any chemicals, you're carrying empty cars. So that one only has a long two, which is that one there. Um, decent job, decent pay. Um, over here, we've got some other stuff. We could do some shunting here. We need a long two license for that, uh, but that would pay 12 grand shunting, not bad. This is what's caught my eye for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is scrap metal. Scrap metal from the harbour is a common thing. It's very heavy, as you can imagine. Uh, 696 tonnes just for that particular consist, though, so it gives you an idea. So if you were to haul that, which is 700, plus that, that's well over 900 tonnes. And coming out of the harbour, which, as you know, is quite steep, only a D6 can do that. Like, literally, D2s can't do it. Um, this is a shunting job. However, if we do this shunting job, which is 16 grand, not not big. We could do this probably with a D2 just about around the harbour because it's flat. Um, if we do this, we load the train, it will generate another freight job to the same place. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this job quickly, which will generate another one that goes to the steel mill, and then we can hold both of those together for some mega bucks. But that's not all. This requires a long two. And we know we need to get concurrent two. And if we do long two and concurrent two, we can have any number of jobs. So why not bring this one in as well? The oil well central, if you look, is not far away from the steel mill. So if we're hauling out of here anyway, what we could do is coming down this um, hill, just before we go into the steel mill, we could just detach a whole bunch of cars off the back and then go into the steel mill, drop the scrap off, reverse back out, and grab this stuff and go off down to the oil well. We probably won't get the um, the bonus for it, but it doesn't matter. It's 26 grand. We'll forget that. It doesn't pay too much anyway. So this is what I want to do. I want to take all three of these. So let's get some licenses. 
we will go down to here. We'll buy concurrent job. That one that. So we've got that now. Congratulations. You now have concurrent two. We will then buy train length two. Confirm that. Congratulations. All your stuff's gone up. And then finally, we'll unlock the almighty DE6. There you go. That has left us with a princely sum of 21,000. However, we have no outstanding bills right now, which is good. And if you look at our stats, this is where it gets a little bit scary. You have 21,000. Your copay is now 58,600. Your fee tolerance is five grand. And your time bonus deadline has gone down by 10%. Now, end game, once you get all the licenses, that'll be minus 35. But 10% we can deal with. Obviously, this copay is pretty high now. So as soon as we've delivered this job, what we'll probably do is get the uh, the manual service and manually service the DE6. Right, I shall quickly do this job here, and then I shall assemble these together, and we'll be ready to go. Turns out that was actually quite a tricky job. <laughs> I had to get multiple cars from uh, different yards. So you can see here, look, uh, three cars from one uh, yard, three cars from another yard, and then uh, six cars from another yard, and then throw them all together, load them up, uh, then drop them off into uh, E yard. So yeah, I was quite involved, but I've done it. So let's chuck it in. And what we should see after we've complete that job, 24 grand for that. Let's have a look what I racked up in fees. So I racked up 3,200 in fees, which is not bad, but you know, you can see our copay is nothing like uh, what it used to be. However, what we should now have, there we go. Scrap metal delivery, beautiful. So if we couple that, so I've been carrying around the other ones here, logistic haul and scrap metal. There we go. So now we have three. So that's 700 tons to the steel mill, uh, 232 tons. Now the question is, will these two fit into one yard at the steel mill? Chances are they will. Steel mill's quite long. But even so, I'm going to put this one behind this one. So if I need to drop this off on its own yard and that one later... I want to make sure we get the bonus for this. However, the way this train will be assembled is as you see it right now uh, with the locomotive on the right. Let's pretend that's the locomotive. So this will be on the back, the logistic hall, the empty cars will be on the back, then our main delivery, and then our hopefully on the same track delivery. Because the idea is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to haul this up here. As we're coming down this slope here, I will slow right down, detach the uh, logistic haul cars, those on the left there. I will detach them and then jump out, flick the brake line on them. So I basically stop the logistic haul here. Well, the train will then carry on with all the steel and then that will be the one at the back and we'll basically drop that off and hopefully that into the same track at steel mill, hand in at the steel mill, then reverse back up the hill, connect up to our cars and then drive the remaining logistic haul through to the Orwell Central. The only thing to watch out for with the logistic haul is these cars may need to be dropped off in different places, possibly. Uh, but we won't know that until uh, we get there. Anyway, so I'm going to start moving things around the yard again. Um, we'll build this train up and then we'll throw a D6 onto the front of it. Obviously, we've got some fees to pay off here, but I'm not, I'm not too fussed about them. I'm going to use this LO55 just to assemble... Uh, the rest of this train here for us. I'm not pulling out the DE6 to do that. We're on a nice flat land here. The DE2 is cheaper to run. It's perfectly suited to shunting. It's what it's for. Uh, don't use the DE6 for your shunting work unless you really have to, uh, which you do in some places. But yeah, I'll get this done and then we'll carry on. Well, here she is. The DE6, as you can see, I've assembled the whole train. I did it with the DE2. And what I've done is what I said I'd do. I've put the uh, FH46, which is the small job, at the front, followed by FH40, runs all the way back there. Uh, it's about here. And then you can see LH17 is on the back there. So that, that consist on the back will stop on the slope, and the rest of this will go into the steel mill. Uh, the only thing that remains to be done is to basically start her up, then start off a timer, hand the jobs in, and off we go. So if we actually look at this, that's a 43-minute job, and the main paying one is a 32 minutes. This is the one I'm expecting to get the bonus on. This, maybe. 
it, you know, I doubt it because it could be a multi-drop. I don't know yet until I hand it in. So we'll start with this timer here. As you can see, 32 minutes, pretty aggressive. But uh, the advantage that this train has is that it is a beast. It, it really will pull well out of the harbour. You've got to keep that speed limit under control coming out of the harbour, keep it at 40. Uh, but once you reach this climb here, you can pick up a little bit of speed, take that 40 bend, and then once you pass this triangle, you can more or less floor it through this section, and then you're into the 60 bend and then the down stretch where we're going to have to uh, break the train into two pieces and then straight into the steel mill, try and get our bonus drop, reverse back, take everything out to um, Oil Central. That's the plan. Let me show you how to start this up. I don't know if you've been in the DE6 before uh, or even seen it before. Uh, it's it's a monster. It's a, it's a proper um, locomotive, this one. Very capable. Uh, just quickly show you around the controls. You've got your uh, tachometer, engine temperature here, and amperage, which you don't worry about at the moment, uh, but you might in simulator, hint, hint. Uh, temperature, you know, you can overheat these things, but um, I've only done it with really, really big holes up steep hills for prolonged periods, and the worst I've had it is up into the yellow here. Uh, nothing like the DE2. Speedo is up there with the kilometers per hour. Brake pressure and the brake pipe is down here, so obviously... Um, this is the one to keep keep your eye on. You need to get this um, up to release the brakes. This will change a little bit in Steering Valley Simulator, as will this. The, the dynamic brake, there's no dynamic, dynamic brake currently in overhauled, but there will be in Simulator. So to brake this thing, you basically use uh, a small amount of um, your train brake when you're going down a hill. Indy brake with the weight like this is more or less useless. I've just got it in place to um, just to hold it hold the uh, the train at the moment but we're on the flat and then you've got the throttle here sand deploy is here fuel and oil there you've got a bell headlights and cab lights okay let's uh, get this thing started the way we do that is we open this panel over here this is where the electrics are we flick on these three switches then we put the breaker in we get the green light close the panel we open this up and then we come outside and we open this up and turn that. Once you turn that, the locomotive will start. We'll go back inside. We can shut this door. You'll hear the audio change. You can open the window. you hear the audio change again. So it depends how you want to drive it. You know, you can literally crouch down with the X key like this, drive it in this position, even lean out the window if you want, or you can, you know, jump around. Just make sure that you've paired your um, remote control up with this thing. This, as you can see, the train brake is released, so we can more or less go once once we're uh, ready. But what we'll do is we'll just start to get it moving slowly. Let me just check the um, switches down here. Yes, they're leaving, not going into the military sector. We can start to get this thing moving and then quickly hand those jobs in and start the timer off. The DE2 was really struggling to move this around the yard, but yeah, like I said, it is flat, so... It is capable of doing it around this yard, but if you put it on a slope, it would it would be impossible. So let's kick this off. We'll start a timer. We'll hand in the job, hand in the job, hand in the job, and we're good to go. We can crank up the power a little bit. Once we start climbing and get things under control, we can start looking through our job. But listen to this. The two things you'll notice about this train are it doesn't suffer from wheel slip like the DE2 does and it doesn't suffer from engine temperatures anything like the DE2 does either. It is a much more capable locomotive. Same principles apply. Get some momentum going. We've got to build our speed up but we don't want to go over 40 because uh, it's 40 degree bends on the climb. While that's building up some speed let me just look at this couple up on G2, G2S, haul it, uncouple on B6S. Okay, so we've got a chance of getting a bonus on that because that's a simple drop into B6S. Uh, it's a pure logistic with no messing about splitting the contest. As for this one, the big one, this goes to B3I and this one goes to, ah, damn it, A6I. That's going to screw the plans up a little bit. Um, B3I and A6I 
we now have a choice between which bonus we try and chase effectively uh, because annoyingly that's going to have that's the big jobs going into B and then the A jobs going into um, the little jobs going into A which is a little bit of a frustration because if you actually look at the steel mill um, the way it's laid out is uh, B is the main input bar and A is uh, A6I is here so we'd have to drop and then reverse back and drop that. By the time we get back to our logistic hall, that bonus will well and truly have disappeared and the, the bonus on that is quite substantial. So we'll have to make a decision about which one we go for. Right, we're starting to hit the climb. Bring up the power a little bit. Let's get all that, all that juicy audio. Now, the main thing is to just watch what the speedo is doing. And if you see it trending downwards, which it is, bring up one notch of power. Another notch. Just check out for the wheel slip. Get wheel slip, you've got to get the sand down. But it can do it. You've just got to make sure that you use the momentum. This is the most difficult bit, the climbing 40 turn. This is where you get wheel slip. Once we get past this triangle, we should be okay. But yeah, you know, we're hauling a lot of weight here. If we spot the back of the train, it's back there somewhere. I can't actually see it from this view. Okay, now when you get near the top of this, you may notice the speed start to trend. At the moment, it's fairly, fairly stable, just coming back a little bit. We're on full power, but it will start to flatten out shortly. As you can see, the temps are rising, but very, very slowly compared to the DE2. Entering the flat zone. I love doing jobs like this, I really do. The DE6 is so much fun. Later on, we'll, we'll start using two DE6s and, um, yeah, hauling some absolutely crazy stuff. Okay, so the speed's now trending up. Did you see that? We know that we've got to keep a 40 limit around that section, so do not let it go over 40. So back off on the throttle. You should be able to turn the sand off now. Beautiful, isn't it? It's like so much weight behind us. You're probably looking at about 1,200 tons behind us, something like that. 11, 1,200 tons. And the whole thing is about 400 and something meters, I think. Which is not, it's not the biggest job you can do in this game, but it's, it's a fun one. If you've not done this kind of stuff, it's fun. Okay, let's bring the power back a little bit now. Just want to. Settle the temperatures and um, keep the speed. We don't know if the backs pass through here. We don't know if that's 400 meters or not. The only way you can tell is if you... There is a caboose that you can unlock in Deewer Valley, which you actually get... You buy the key... Oh, crikey. You buy the key, I think, either from Southwest or from Machine Factory. And the, and the actual... If you look at that little bit there, the actual garage is there where you go and... Um, use the key and inside is a caboose get the speed back up again and what you can do with the caboose it weighs 20 tons you can put it on the back of your train and it actually shows up on the map wherever it is so if you're using it here and it was on the back of your train you would see the little marker at the back moving along with you and it also boosts the Wi-Fi signal so by the Wi-Fi I mean wireless I mean this thing this signal strength here is significantly boosted if you have the caboose as well. Uh, it also has a charging unit inside, so you can put this thing on the charger and actually recharge it instead of just using the uh, the little solar panel on it. Um, all of these things will become more important in Dero Valley Simulator simply because um, it won't always be daytime, so you won't always be able to charge this. Although, I believe they've increased the battery length in Dero Valley Simulator, so it will actually last like a whole day or something, and then you can put up and charge. Yeah, you can see the speed building now. 
Just going to keep it at 40 while the back gets over that corner there. I've also got this little bit coming up. But yeah, that's the DE6. Absolute monster. Two DE2s would not have a hope of dealing with this. But one DE6, no problem at all. No temperature worries either. It's beautiful. It's great stuff. I love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to get through here. We'll start picking up speed through there, and then we'll get ready for our drop. Uh, now, in terms of the drop, what we need to work out is there's our two jobs, and these are the cars that we want to drop. So, we need to count how many cars we want to drop. There are six in that row, six in that row, and two here. So that's a total of 12 plus 2 is 14. So we want 14 cars off the back. So starting at the back, if we scroll that, that's one car. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's it. That's the easy way of doing it, the old school way of doing it. So remember that, number 17. The other way of doing it is start off on the maximum, deduct 14 cars, that's 16, and add one, that's 17. So two different ways of doing it. As long as you arrive at the same number, that should be good. So once that's on minus 17, that will uncouple the rear 14 cars. And what we'll do is we'll use the remote control on that bend as we're going around it we'll basically detach the cars um, use the remote control to keep the train under control don't go that slow and we'll jump onto the at the back of the these empty empty um, canisters and we'll basically use we'll flip the valve on the uh, on the consist let the air out to put the brakes on and keep it on that hill now we could do all of this because we're the only train in the whole thing it's a single player game obviously you wouldn't normally block lines with cars like that but we can get away with it in this game cool so we'll pick it up when we're um, on the approach to detaching the truck now one of the things about the DE6 is it's very capable uh, just look at the speed we've got here so I'm just going to whack some brakes on because we need to get the speed on the 60s as we go around this bend don't panic with the brakes just give them time and then back them off before you need to um, finish using them It's not releasing that train brake onto this, although it looks like it has, but the remote's... There you go, I think it was a bug in the remote. Um, yeah, you've got to be careful not to panic when it comes to the braking. Come on, there we go. Uh, two or three pips will more than get your speed under control. It's got this weird bug again, there we go. It's got this weird bug where sometimes when you, if you tab out and tab back in again, it, um, it decreases the throttle without you even doing anything to the controls. Uh, and that just happened to me, unfortunately, so it's kind of dropped the speed back down. At least when you're using keys, anyway. You can see it there, look. It's, it's kind of slowly... It's such a weird bug. There we go. I think it's fixed itself. So that costs us a little bit of time, but it's fine. Okay, so, you come round the bend at 60 maximum. Ideally, you want to be shaving your speed off just enough. Uh, but I had some issues there. Now we're on the downslope. You really will pick up speed coming downhill. The brakes are more than capable of slowing this thing down. You can probably stop accelerating now. Quick time check. We've got about 17 minutes to drop this consist off. Decision time. Do we try and get the bonus on this? Because we know that that's a separate... If we go and drop that off we will no way get the bonus on this. If we try to just drop that off, leave that in the yard as well and come back later for it, we may get the bonus on this. Maybe. Anyway, we're coming down the hill now, so we need to think about breaking this consistent part. So what we'll do is we'll put like one pip of brake on here. Let's put two on. Get it under control. We're going to jump outside. Jump to the back of the train. And then try and make a judgment call about when to... Um, I'm just going to slow it down one more because I need time to do this bit down there. We'll uncouple that. Jump onto here. Flick the brake line on it. Jump back on that. And then 
make sure we've got this under control. Now, we want to be going into uh, 3i, which is coming in from the southwest, is second on the right. Check the speed check. It's good. So second on the right, we want to be going into. And what I plan to do is leave all of this behind. Uh, even the other bit. We won't be able to hand that small job in, but we can hand the big job in, in theory. Let's keep the speed going. Uh, because it's coming into 3i, it won't be on the main line, so we should be able to then pull forward onto the main line and reverse back up and go and grab that other consist and maybe get there in 11 minutes, we'll see. Bit of a rush, but, you know, I like a challenge. So let's see what we're doing here. So that switch needs to be set to go right, which it is. That one, I think, is the one we want. No, maybe not that one. Was 3i. Yep, yeah, that one. That is that one. Gets the speed under control. So this is 3i. Release the brakes. So what I'm planning on doing is getting it in here, parking it up, detaching, leaving the whole thing there and coming back for that other one later. Time check. Okay, we've got the bonus on this, no problem. Getting the bonus and logistic will definitely be fun. But this is the kind of thing you can do when you get concurrent jobs too. You can put these things together and start to make up your own little challenges almost. Now that's on minus one, which is correct. We're just going to break off the... Um, break off those cars behind. In theory, what we should do is break four off separately. But it doesn't matter for now. I'll put the brakes on there. Yikes, that's overshooting. Stop. Uncouple. Let it release the brakes. Get it moving forward. Jump into here. We'll take the big job. We'll hand that in. So that's going to get us 25 grand. Thank you very much. And then what we want to do is... Oops, missed. Missed again. get on this and start reversing back up the main line so we'll get it into reverse and then we'll start braking apply some reverse power flick that and now we need to gun it all the way back up that hill but what we can do we know we need to get those front four cars off here so what we can do, we can go one, that is FH46, two, three, four, that's 46, this should be the different one. Yep, so what we can do is basically break that for ourselves later. So we can come back and get this later, those four cars, they still need moving over into um, the A yard. on to this the brakes on what is going on with this remote control the remote control keeps doing really weird things there we go yeah so time is of the essence when you're doing this kind of thing we should be able to go through here at 50 without problems Remember, we're going straight up, collecting, connecting, and going back down again. This timer here is set for the original job. This job, which is the one we're trying to do now, was, I think, 11 minutes longer. Um, we'll look at it in a second. 11 minutes longer. So if we stop the clock there and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'll just go 10 and start it again. If we can finish it before then, we'll be good. This is where we hope nobody linked the rest of our train back up this hill. When we go through this switch here, we'll need to flick the switch because we want to go that way next. 
And then we need to start looking at where we need to go into. So we'll get that out as we go over it. We'll flick it to the left. It's now set. And we should be approaching. I can't remember how far up the hill we left it. Oh god, there it is. Now this is up a hill, so... It's not so bad. Yeah, don't... Don't uh, rush this bit. You don't want to smash into the rest of your train and... Remember how high your copay level is now. It will cost an absolute fortune. Okay, put it back into um, forward. You've got to give it time now for those brakes to um, to settle down. Just make sure that that valve is in the open position. It is because I manually opened it. But the real way to check is come in here and just double check that pressure's building. If that pressure's building, you're good. If that pressure does not build. There's a valve open. Okay, right. Let's do this. Now, this needs to go into B6S, into OWC station. If we jump over to our station list, down at the bottom there, you see the little tabs. We just spin that marker along to OWC. Use the mouse wheel. OWC, Orwell Central. Uh, that's not Orwell Central. Orwell Central A overview. Orwell Central, yeah, A overview. One second. Speed control here. Remember, this is a, a, a descending left turn here, so get some a little bit of brake on. Just coming around this bend. Otherwise, it will start to accelerate through here and you'll derail. Just keep it under 50, so maybe two pips of brake needed. A lot, a lot of weight considering this is an empty contest, but that is quite a steep gradient, that is. This gets three, mark, three on, I don't trust it. Empty cars have a much higher chance of derailing as well than, than full cars, and these are empty. The worst ones are empty flatbeds, they're terrible. Okay. Um, let me see, OWS B6S, so OWC B6S. Coming in from the east, straight into B. B yard coming in from the east is here. B6S is that way. So as we come in, it'll be keep left into B6S, and then the station yard is behind us. So as long as these points are set correctly, we should be in for a second bonus here. And the money we'll make, we could just teleport back to the steel mill, pick up a DE2, and just run that final job in. Now, you've got to be careful here. Just get your little switch out, just in case, because that bush hides the fact that these may not be set correctly, but they are, thankfully. Right, just looking back at the overview, as we come in from the east, we need to keep left initially. Yeah, so we keep left coming in. And then we're going to keep left, 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 left into 6S. This is looking good, guys. Looking good. We might end up with a fat payout here. Right. There's the approach. And we can see keep left, keep left, keep left, keep left, keep left. I had to slam the anchors on there because I want the speed under 30 when we go through these um, switches. Looks to me like there's something already in that yard. We're going to have to push out of the way. Oh, no. I've just noticed that switch was wrong. I'm not sure how that happened, but I just noticed the switch was wrong. This is probably why it's a logistical, because there is something in the way. Let me reverse that back. I just noticed the last second that switch was not set correctly. Yeah, look, there's something already in the yard here, annoyingly. So I suppose, in theory, what we could do is go beyond this and reverse into it. 
it might be better if we do because then we can get out of it because remember we need to we need to get the locomotive away if we just go straight in there we're going to be trapped in between all those cars which is a why it's a logistical okay so what we'll do is we'll put that on straight We'll do it this way. We'll go forward and reverse into it. We can do that, looking at the yard. All right, so I've, I've driven past it. I'm reversing back in to be success. I've just got myself on the back car here using the remote. Really handy way to do this. Um, obviously, this is not going to fit into this gap. So what we're going to have to do is connect up to this car. Um, once we couple up, Obviously, the brake pressure will have to rebuild up on those cars at the back because the, the uh, pressure will be off in those cars. And then we'll have to push the whole thing back a little bit. And then we can disconnect and move the locomotive out the way. We'll just wait for the little beep. Hopefully, we got it right. Did we get it right? Yeah, there it is. Perfect didn't even feel a thing look at that right so where do we want to go well we'll just wait for the brake pressure to build up we'll get some force on it but the furthest you want to go is the back of this you want to be where's the um put it this way you don't want to be near the join but usually where the sign is is a good marker there's the there's the sign there the label on it, it should say b6s there it is so if we get the back to like here then uncouple, we can then run into the yard there, into the station, and hopefully get um, bonus pay, because we've got 10 minutes by my calculations. And this thing pays uh, best part of 26 and a half, so what's that, an extra bonus? Probably looking at near 40 grand, which is not bad. And all we lost was the bonus on that one, and that bonus on that one was only three and a half, so this is definitely a better way of doing it. But yeah, I'll teleport over there and move that one into position. We'll finish this off. But that's what makes us a logistic haul. Right, full brakes. Uncouple on the minus one, which will disconnect the locomotive. And then get the job. Yay, look at that. 32 minutes out of 43. How much do we get? 39,800. What's our fees looking like? So we've racked up um, six grand on um, another. That's the DE2 I used. This is the one we've been using, the L005. So we've racked up 18,800. I'll get this out of the way. Um, but yeah. That's it. That's the job done right there. So I'll move this out of the way. I'll jump over and finish that job off. We don't need to put that in the video. Um, but. Our bonus is our bank balance is back up to like well over a hundred grand again. What I want to do next time is we'll basically we're gonna get the manual servicing license for a kickoff so that we can service this thing uh, half price. So twenty grand, half price ten. You won't be able to pay all the fees off that way. It's still some environmental fees or squirrel squirrel tax as I like to call it. Um but yeah, other than that, we are done here. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Take care. Happy training.